one. What is good? What is good, everybody? It's your boy Sports PSP in the building. Man, what an exhilarating, what a thrilling truth to the wire game between the Alabama Clemson Tide, the number one seed Alabama Crimson Tide, and the Texas Longhorns. Um, I previously predicted that Alabama was going to beat Texas 40 to 13. You can check it out on my IG, my TikTok, my Twitter, my YouTube channel, anywhere on my social media. But I had Alabama winning 40 to 13, but Alabama won this one 20 to 19. It was a close, truth to the wire game. Um, Alabama was trailing 19 to 17 late in the fourth quarter. Uh, with a minute 29 left, and Bryce Young was money, was clutch time in the fourth quarter, in the final drive. He showed you exactly why he is the reigning Heisman Trophy winner, why he will be in the discussion for the Heisman Trophy again, and everything else about him, and why he will also be considered the number one pick in the next year's NFL draft. Between him, C.J. Stroud, Will Anderson. And Will Anderson on third and three before Texas put the game 19-17. That key sack he had on third and three to put it at fourth and ten. That was a big, big, crucial play. And overall, Will Anderson and Bryce Young overall didn't play particularly well. Will Anderson, that was his only sack in the game. First sack of the season. Overall, he didn't play particularly well. He had four penalties three for offsides one for um unnecessary roughness and Bryce Young overall Texas defense Texas's defense played outstanding against Alabama's offense the way they were able to penetrate and get after Bryce Young put a lot of pressure on Bryce Young particularly in the pocket inside and outside the pocket um unfortunately bad news for Texas their star quarterback, Quinn Harris, who I thought overall, given the circumstances he was in, he was exceptional. He played outstanding. Uh, 9 of 12 for 134 yards, an average of 11.2 yards passing per attempt. I thought Bryce, uh, I'm sorry, not Bryce Young, Quinn Harris, I'm sorry, Quinn Harris played outstanding. Unfortunately, he couldn't finish the rest of the game due to an injury, and as a result, Hudson card came in for Texas fans man it's like it's reminiscent it's reminiscent back in 2010 in the national championship game against the Alabama Crimson Tide remember Colt McCoy was injured and got hurt in that game and as a result Alabama won I think the score was 37 to 21 and Texas fans would be like see see if Quinn Harris finished the rest of the entire game, we probably would have won. And you have made a compelling point because Quinn Harris, before the injury, was outstanding. 9 of 12, as I mentioned, 134 yards. He should have easily had a touchdown catch. He threw a beautiful bomb in the first quarter to Xavier Worthy. But unfortunately, Xavier Worthy dropped the football. Um, only spectacular play I really saw was on the 81-yard touchdown run by Alabama's running back, Chase McGalen. He had six carries in that game for 97 yards and one touchdown. But back to Bryce Young. Clutch time in the fourth quarter. He was amazing. Um, the touchdown pass he threw to Jameer Gibbs, the way that he can manipulate, escape out of the pocket, and still be able to throw a dime in tight pressure. Man. What more can you say about Bryce Young? Um, but with the good, however, there comes with the bad with Alabama. I thought Alabama overall, I'm not going to give them an F for their performance because at the end of the day, you still picked up the W. But if I got to be completely honest, if I had to give them a grade, I give them a D. A D. Because the penalties was just too much. 15 penalties in that game for about 100 yards. And if you look at the time of possession, Texas's football, their offense, they won the time of possession. 
30 minutes to 44 seconds. Alabama's 29 minutes to 16 seconds. Um, Texas had more first downs than Alabama. Texas with 25. Alabama with 16. Alabama had three more yards in total yards, 374. Alabama to 371. I just thought some of the uh, the penalties, the dumb penalties I mentioned with Will Anderson, the pass interference penalties, and some of the crucial penalties on offense and defense collectively on Alabama, that was just boneheaded, bad, dumb, undisciplined football. Bad, crucial penalties that fortunately for Alabama, it didn't cost them the game. Thank God for them, it didn't cost them the game. But it's probably going, it's probably or definitely going to hurt them as far as like the AP and coaches poll. Is it going to hurt them from going to the number one to now like the number two, the number three, or the number four team in all of college football? Is Georgia or Ohio State going to be the new number one given Alabama's victory against Texas, even though it was a victory, but it was a close victory? Alabama only won that game. By one point. And prior to that game, it was predicted that Alabama was going to wipe the floor against Texas. And Alabama was a 20-point favorite leading into that game. So, you also have to take into consideration that and how it's going to affect Alabama as far as um, the polls. But also, if you're giving up that many penalties against an unranked team in Texas, imagine what you're going to be when you go up against top-notch teams if you're Bama. So those are some things that they need to clean up, that they need to tweak or rectify. But um, big ups to Bryce Young. Big ups to Will Anderson on that key sack on third and three. Um, what more can you say about Alabama? When it counts most, they delivered. Bryce Young, another, dare I say, another Heisman moment for him. Because even though statistically it wasn't the greatest game of his life, 27 to 39, 213 yards, one touchdown. But the drives in the fourth quarter, the touchdown pass to Jameer Gibbs, um, the game winning drive to put Alabama in a position for the game winning field goal and for them to win that game speaks high and just tells you, just shows you how great Bryce Young is. Um, Texas, like I said, is going to hurt. This is a tough, painful loss. But overall, with Steve Starkeesian as the head coach and Quinn Ayers, again, this is going to be a problem. Because if Quinn Ayers can't go, you're going to have to go with Hudson Card. And Hudson Card, in the game, even though he played throughout the entire game, he was limping. And your offense is going to be compromised. Because Quinn Ayers, the thing that he provides you is that vertical threat. So now with Hudson Card at quarterback, the offense is going to be compromised. You're going to have to ask him to be more of a game manager. You're going to have to ask him to run with the football more. You're going to have to ask him not put the ball in harm's way. So Texas is going to have to make some adjustments on offense if Quinn Ayers is unable to go. And Texas, they're going to have to live with this yet again. Man, if we had Quinn Ayers at quarterback, just like we had, Col just like if we had a chance with Colt McCoy at quarterback in a national championship game against Bama, we would have had a chance and we would have won. A, a compelling argument for Texas, but in the end, Bama got the job done. So those are my takes. Um, anyway, let me know what y'all think in the comment section below. Was it more good Bama? Was it more Texas with some of the mistakes, particularly in that final drive? And do you think the outcome of the game would have been much different if Quinn Ayers had played the rest of the game?